Hi everyone, welcome to Camilla Cava Food Photography Podcast, a place where I interview talents in food photography industry to help you and myself grow a food photography career. On today's podcast, I am very excited to talk to Amy Twigger from Twig Studios, a food photographer and stylist based in Devon. Her lifestyle and work is Pinterest worthy and has found a loyal following there with 618,000 followers on Pinterest along with 163,000 followers on Instagram. Amy's work is as unique as her approach. She prefers to use only natural light and highlights organic textures and textiles that have a special place in her everyday lifestyle. Amy's photos have won her the Pink Lady Food Photographer of the Year Award in 2019 and 2020 in the category for Best Food Blogger. Her portfolio is as expansive and comprehensive. Her blog, recipes, cookbooks, magazine features and workshops all seem to hold equal weight and together paint the portrait of a truly unique artist. Join us today as we explore Amy's roots, her unique approach to photography, and how to make the most of the resources you have available to you. Hi, Amy. Welcome on the podcast. Hi. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, So for the listeners that don't know you yet, could you please introduce yourself? What do you do? Uh, Where are you based? Um, What's your name? Everything. Okay. So um, I'm Amy, and I'm a photographer and stylist and uh, baker and I can be found on uh, Twig Studios on Instagram and twigstudios.com I've got um, a website and I'm based in awesome. um, in Devon in England. Oh, that sounds lovely. Um, awesome. I saw on your website that you do um, not only food photography, is that right? Like you also do portrait and travel photography? Uh, yeah, I kind of um try my hand at a bit of everything (laughs) that's awesome most of um sort of the odd jobs that I do for clients is kind of a bit of everything so it's not all food I've got one client that's um like a landscaping company so gardening pictures of that sort of thing so that's quite fun sick so you photograph also then landscapes for them that's interesting yeah Oh, yeah, wow. so they um do um they do like gardens and stuff. So I'll go around to the houses and kind of shoot the work that they've done. So that's quite fun. Sick. So you have so many, let's say, bubble of the businesses around. So let's say food photography, the landscape photography. You're an influencer. You're a food blogger. How are you managing <laughs> it all together? It seems like a lot to me. Um, it, the funny thing is. It's like I've never really had like a business strategy. I kind of just go with the flow and just see what I feel like. It's quite, I don't know, it's quite interesting. Uh-huh. So whenever the opportunity comes, you just, yeah, I'm going to do that. I can do that. Yeah. Or how does it work when? Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I feel like a bit of an imposter. I'm like, mm, I don't know how to do this, but I'll just wing it and see how it goes. <laughs> Can you give an example of something like that? Like an opportunity that came and you were like, okay. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, the first time I shot in a restaurant, like I hadn't ever done any shoots like that before. And I was just like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> and it, it actually went so well um, that the company was like, like even now, this was years ago, they called me recently. They were like, uh-huh. everyone since has always said, could we get it in this style? I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, it was quite fun. Interesting. So for example, let's say for the, because um, that might be also interesting for the food photographers that just starting and um, how did it work at that restaurant contacting? How did it found you? And um yeah, how did you uh, prepare for that shoot? Because it was your first one. Do you remember that? Yeah, they found me on um, Instagram and then um, it was a restaurant in London, an Indian restaurant. So that was like even more nerve wracking because I felt like, oh, I mean, Indian food, the styling, everything's a bit different. Can but, be tricky. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the restaurant was really um, nice inside and the light was perfect because that was the one thing I was nervous about because I thought oh yeah you know the light's going to be so different than what I'm used to but it went really well and um the lady that was um 
running it for the restaurant she she modeled for me so like when there was food that was a bit tricky oh, I was great. like oh can you like use your hands and style it like this and yeah it went really nicely nice and we're usually pretty happy to to do that as well right like modeling with your hands that's not yeah. a big issue yeah yeah that helps yeah, I remember restaurants in the beginning also, my fir- they, they were my first um, assignments as a food photographer as well. So every time I would go in the first times, I was always very nervous, especially about the light, yeah. especially about the light. Yeah, because when you if you work with natural light, it can be tricky. Is there a window? Is there, you know, how is the day that day? Like, is it cloudy or not? Because you still shoot with natural light all the time, aren't you? Or yeah. Did you start shooting natural yeah. Light? I mean, I bought um like a cheap eBay light, and I've used it like twice. Uh huh. But I mostly will use natural light. Awesome. Because here, when I I wanted to ask you, like, um, how does it work? So, for example, what if it's day where it's super cloudy and super dark, or other way around, a direct sunlight coming in? Like, you don't have that much control with natural light. Does it mean you move your shoots, or do you work your way? around it or how do you control yeah. it basically most of my work is work that I do myself at home where there isn't mm-hmm. such a tight sort of schedule I mean if it's for social media like that's my main sort of client work so I can mm-hmm. have the freedom to kind of switch it around on the days and stuff mm-hmm. um but I mean if like in winter if I've got jobs I will plan the shoot so that it's not something that has action so I can put Mm -hmm. the shutter speed very low right things like that so like I wouldn't do probably like a pouring shot or something with Mm -hmm. like action I kind of plan my shoot so that it can be something where it's still so the shutter speed can be on the lowest possible settings and does it happen that the client requires you for example to have a pouring shot and then in such case How do you work around that? No, I've I've been quite lucky. They've usually always given me sort of free reign to do Mm -hmm. whatever I want. So that's been quite good. Oh, that's great. Awesome. And for client work, does it mean you also make pictures uh, for the clients for their Instagram? Or does it mean more like a sponsored post? So you still do? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, over the years, it kind of changes. But at the moment... The only sort of jobs I do get seems to be sort of influencer type things where I'll Mm -hmm. create a recipe and post it on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Using like the ingredient or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. That seems to be the main thing at the moment. And out of curiosity, how do you um, find these clients or do they always find you through the Instagram? Yeah, so that seems to be... um, you know everyone always laughs at me because I'm so laid back I think if I had (laughs) that sort of business mind I would go out and search for them all and be like right yeah yeah, yeah. but I don't know I don't know if it's laziness or just not having that sort of business mind but I I tend to wait for them to come to me (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah, I get it like yeah it's less stressful isn't it and then you can manage everything yeah yeah I I, I listen to um, podcasts where they're and people, people are like, right, you need to go and find clients. And it feels so strange. I don't know yeah. if it's because when I started this, it was just a hobby and it never was a business. So I've never really switched uh-huh. my mindset into like, this is a business. I still kind of see it as a hobby that if I get a job, then that's, then that's like a bonus. Yeah, 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 nice. But it is your main income source right now, right? It is your, yeah. basically, your work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm not earning mega bucks, but I get by. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, well, that's most important that you enjoy it and you get by. And uh, yeah, yeah. I think it would be nice if I could switch my mindset and be more proactive. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, every every January, I'm like, right, this year I'm going to do this. <laughs> it never <Yeah>. happens. <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I wish I would be more laid back right now, actually. But yeah, not about me. Um, yeah, so um, I want to talk a little bit about your creative processes because 
your images is something out of this world. I mean, they are oh, so you. goddamn gorgeous. And it's always something, I don't know, special and creative in what you do. So would it be possible to uh, for you to walk me through, like, through your creative process? So how are the ideas born? And do you do everything, like, on the spot? Or do you draw things out? Like, mm -hmm. how does it start, the shoot, let's say? It depends. If I've got, like, say, like, a really good idea comes to my head for, like, something to create, then I will usually, like, plan it in my head first. Like, so I'll, that, I want to shoot it like this. So sometimes if I've got, if it's like a personal project, it will probably just be planned in my head. And I will just be like, oh, all right, so it's going to look like this. So I want to shoot it in this way. Whereas if it's something yeah. a little bit more important, maybe for a client, then I will draw out like um, a step by step sort of plan in my notebook. Yeah. And I will kind of doodle, uh -huh. doodle it out. So I've got that idea first. And then I would think about what's in the picture and think about props. Maybe I'll think about what color mm -hmm. dress I'm going to put on for the shot um, and mm -hmm. kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. And the props when you arrange also like day or days before, right? Um, no, I'm not usually that organized, but maybe like the night before I'll think, right, so I need this tomorrow, things like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, even just like on the fly, some of my best pictures, I haven't really been organized at all. And I've just kind of grabbed yeah. it. Yeah, I think I do like that spontaneity where it's kind of a little bit planned and not. And you kind of revolve. Mm -hmm. Or even sometimes like I'll put on one dress. And then I'll think, oh, no, this color doesn't work and I'll switch it. I don't mm -hmm. like to be too organized because the light I don't know I kind of go by the light and the feeling I have on the day true yeah because working with natural light you also don't know how it will like how the day will look like as well I guess yeah so you have to adjust on that and then um let's say where do you gather your props usually from do you have like specific spots or like your dresses your beautiful dresses uh where I buy them from uh-huh um yeah so most of my clothes um i've got like a few favorite shops uh sonder floor uh I little woman I... italia i um, think sonder floor is lithuanian isn't it yeah nice and um vintage um if ever i've traveled to france i've usually um pick up some things from like brocants like linen Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Etsy. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Um, I love linen, so all my clothes are linen. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, linen is beautiful. Awesome. Okay, so you gathered your props, and then on the day itself, like how late usually do you start the shoot, um, and how long does it take? Yeah, so the light I have in the room I usually shoot in is good from like 11 onwards and mm -hmm. um so it's kind of like nice light until about two and then the sun starts to come around and it starts yeah. to get harsher and harsher so yeah. if i want to do something really dramatic i can do it at like five o'clock uh -huh. whereas like the normal light is sort of good till two o'clock mm -hmm. And you cook yourself the food as well, right? So you have to do that beforehand. Is that very stressful? Because to me, it seems so stressful to first cook the perfect meal that needs to look perfect and then still photograph it in the same day. Yeah, so depending on what it is, sometimes I will prep stuff the night before. Mm -hmm. But because a lot of my shots are like the prep shots. Mm -hmm. So I, kind right. of, I like to photograph that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a beautiful part, I think, actually, of the photography. That's something I'm missing because I don't cook that much myself, which I wish I would. So, yeah. Yeah, nice. And then, um, okay, so to dive more in the technical side, let's say, um, what is your equipment? What camera do you use? What lens do you use? Um, so I've got the Canon 5D Mark IV, mm -hmm. I think. 
And I just have the cheap 50 millimeter 1.8 Canon lens. Yeah. yeah. Never, I don't know. I know I need to upgrade and get like a better one, but I don't know. I just really like it. Uh huh. <laughs> Sick. Yeah. And um, I've got a Manfrotto tripod. It's not very high, but it's got the arm that sort of comes out. So oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite handy. And I tend to use my tripod all the time now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to only ever do handheld, but in the last sort of two oh. years, now I'm only, I only tend to use my tripod. Yeah, with a slow shutter speed, you probably have to, right? Yeah, it's just easier. <laughs> makes sense. Nice. And then you use white and black boards to shape the light or something like that? Because I bet you shape the light mm. because you work with the natural light, right? The thing is, the room that I shoot in, I'm so lucky that it's quite, like, narrow. So uh-huh. it's already quite dark in places. Uh-huh. So I do have, um, like, a black reflector that I will use sometimes. But I don't have to sort of bounce the light. I'm quite lucky. And I don't know uh-huh. if it's because the room's painted, like, a light grey as well. That mm-hmm. I think perhaps that helps. Yeah, it was your advice to get the walls, I think, grey. So I got yeah. my walls also grey in the studio. So yeah, nice. I don't know. I yeah. find it's... I do it's notice better. the difference. Um, Like, my friend Roz has a room that's dark blue, and that's different as well. I like uh-huh. Because it bounces that blue light, basically. It makes it colder, the images, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, though. I'm considering painting a blue room here. <laughs> yeah? get like a more of a blue tint on the color on a yeah 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 or because white walls would bounce basically all the light around and i feel like it would make the image more flatter in such case you definitely need like blackboards to kind of yeah control the light my um, dining room is all white so when i want to do a picture with my fireplace Mm -hmm. i find it quite difficult to get the light right in there because everything is so white yeah so I do use a black um, sort of bounce board then. Yeah, to control it. Makes sense. Yeah. And actually, when you photograph with uh, your fireplace, let's say you mentioned. Um, yeah. Do you still have a window in that room or do you actually yeah, let's so fireplace? The... Okay. I have a window in that room, but um, the light is very strange. So that that is the room that I've used my artificial light in. Uh-huh. The two, like the two times I've used it, <laughs> I've used it in yeah. there, and I, I don't, I liked it, but I felt like the tones are so different than with natural light. I think I need to practice trying to understand yeah. it a bit more. I think it's just working with white balance, but I think it's because also if a fireplace is lit, then there's two different white balances in the room that you need yeah. to manage in a way, which yeah. makes it a bit more trickier. But that's why I was wondering how you did that, like photographing fireplace because I think that's very interesting yeah Um, it's weird as well because the one picture I tried and I was wearing a red dress and Mm -hmm. then I changed to a different color dress and it really helped it did actually really help so I've I've realized if I do shoot in that room with the fireplace on Mm -hmm. I need to wear like a certain color dress and it kind of so it doesn't reflect the light or something yeah I don't know it just seems to help because else it goes kind of green the light Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm I don't, I don't really understand it. I think natural light and artificial light. I think it's important to learn natural light first, but then yeah, artificial light is so different. Yeah, well, I, I thought so too in the beginning, actually. But then I realized that um, it's basically exactly the same principle. So whenever yeah. you photograph with artificial light, you have to like control you know, that there is not natural light coming in unless you have a flash. And then use it in exactly the same way. So if you would put the window, like you, you put it exactly in the same position as you would have a window. And then it's, yeah. it's, it's um, I don't know, it's super similar. And then it becomes easier if you start treating and thinking of it as a natural light. Yeah. And that you put it there like you would the natural light. It, it yeah, that's what um, I've kind of tried to place things in front of it as well to break the light mm-hmm. up a bit more because I found it was very. Oh, yeah. Because my windows have got like a cross sort of mm-hmm. panel and then I do place things between the light and on the table because yeah. I like extra shadows so yeah I spent a lot of time sort of placing things in between the light 
and the table and it did it ended up coming out quite nice but okay yeah with more diffusion i just felt i I saw i don't know i think it was more time consuming i'm kind of like i just want to be like bam bam i agree i agree (laughs) yeah i agree the artificial light is way more time consuming than natural light yeah yeah indeed that's annoying part of it (laughs) i think i think as well the reason i love photography so much is the line like Mm -hmm. um most of the time i take pictures it is the light that i'm photographing and not the subject if you know what i mean right yeah i think that's why i love natural light because that's like where the thing i'm attracted most to the way the light Mm -hmm. hits things i find so beautiful like i'm trying to document that in the picture not just the thing i'm taking the picture of no yeah both both are extremely important the composition part and the light the way the light is yeah um, yeah. yeah indeed like with a, with a flat light there's no image like yeah it just doesn't work no <laughs> makes sense yeah okay awesome so that was your photography process your equipment and then um okay so now you're building your composition yeah and um do you have some tricks or tips there? Because, for example, I saw that uh, your images, um, they have quite a lot of props around it. And when I try to use a lot of props, it becomes a big mess because, I, I don't know, it's just, I ca- it's easier for me to have like three, four props and it's ready. But then it doesn't, the image is not that storytelling like yours are. So how do you know that it's enough already of the props and... Um, hmm that it's ready to be photographed, if that makes any sense. I do think about composition quite a lot. Like, Uh that's really important to me. And because, obviously, I know the crop for Instagram, I kind of um, imagine that my... Like, I'll put my finger over the screen to kind of see the size for Instagram, and I'll move stuff accordingly, Mm -hmm. and I'll... I'll take the picture knowing that someone's going to be cropped off. Mm-hmm. So that, like having that mindset instantly in my head, knowing where the crop's going to be, I think that helps quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I don't mind mess and I don't mind abundance in the shots, but I will try and pick things that complement each other, whether it's like the shape or the size. Mm-hmm. So having that sort of mess, it's not, it all kind of works. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, so I'll, I don't really think about like even numbers and things like that, but I do try to focus on shapes or pos- the way things are positioned. Because if you've got a lot going on in a picture, I think that works fine if it's in sort of the right place, maybe, or the mm-hmm. right angle. Mm-hmm. So um, if there's things that are straight in the picture, I might angle them in a way that points to the most right. important thing. You can kind of use them uh-huh. like to tell the story, but also you can use them to point to like where the focus should be. So it's quite, mm-hmm. they're good. Like when it is abundance like that, that is a good way to use them as kind of like they're leading the viewer to look at the most important thing. Mm-hmm. And also it's real. Like I think when right. you're cooking, I don't know if everyone is like me. I'm like the cookie monster in that advert where you uh, like, I am a mess. Like I have, like, that's how it looks when I cook. So I, I want it to be as natural as uh-huh. possible. Like there is mess everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, same here. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just, I feel like building that big composition is so tricky. Like, yeah, but that think... makes sense. Trying to put the objects in a way that yeah, I lines. think I think if you think less about how much is there and think more about how it's placed or like Mm -hmm. how it builds the story, then I think Mm -hmm. you'll feel more relaxed about it, if you know what I mean. Like Mm -hmm. think more about what you're trying to tell the person. So like I try to only use props that make sense being in the shop. So like... um, Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't put something in there that that's not important to the story. So everything 
even if there's an image with loads of things in, everything kind of makes sense or has like a meaning to mm -hmm. the recipe. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And you bring all the props, let's say, already at the spot and then you just put them all together. You build and like, oh, wait a minute, maybe that works. And you go grab it and... Yes, yeah, so, um, I keep all my props in the room where I take my pictures, so it's quite handy. Okay, right. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And I'll make the stuff like there on the table. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like what you see is like real. Like, oh, you actually will also like let's say cook there as well, like prepare yeah. the dough yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you feel that this is a moment to capture. And then yeah. Capture. So I'll have my camera set up on the tripod as I'm making mm -hmm. it and I'll link it to my phone with the Canon app. Mm -hmm. And I'll have that sort of in front of me. And then if I get to a part where I think, oh, this would be a nice part mm -hmm. to photograph or the light is hitting this nice, then I'll kind of click the picture. And I'll I'll take maybe like 30 shots, maybe mm -hmm. some, sometimes 50. And I'll just keep mm -hmm. the ones that I think best. tell the story best. Because then, I, I don't know, over the years, I have kind of got a bit, I don't know, like obsessive. Like I'm like, oh no, my hands in the wrong position in that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I started really... noticing details. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. thing. But yeah. really, um, my friend Roz, last time I stayed with her, she's like, oh my gosh, you've changed. Like you, you're yeah. so fast. <laughs> because I kept having to reshoot something. I was like, oh no, no, I need to do that again. <laughs> she was like, what's happened? <laughs> I've become a perfectionist. But I don't know. I like it. Yeah, I think you became a like the more you more you do it, you 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 develop an eye for it. So you started noticing all the yeah. little details. But I'm like, oh, hang on, that one them. that one thing's in the wrong place. I just need to move it. And she's like, really? Like you're gonna reshoot <laughs> it for one one thing? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I think if it's if it's all set up and it's there ready to go, I mean, it's not gonna take long to move like one thing and get it perfect because oh, i know yeah. i know that oh, well, no, yeah. like no one else will probably notice it but i know i will notice it so if i post it yeah. and like in my head i'll think oh i wish i had moved that wrong thing like you probably could do it with photoshop yeah. and stuff but i'd rather just get it right in the first time yeah yeah makes sense yeah interesting Okay, so now let's say your shoot is done, you got the perfect composition. What's next? Editing. Yeah. What do you use? So I use a mix of both um, Lightroom and Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I used to only use Lightroom, but in the last um, year or so, the last year in particular, I started to learn a little bit more about Photoshop. Mm -hmm. So my friend Stella taught me a bit about it. And so now I will open the image in Lightroom. I will um, probably do like the vignette and the highlights. And I'll use like the clarity brush on some areas. Mm -hmm. Then I'll save it and then open it in Photoshop. And then I will, like, I just find the eraser tool there's always like a dog hair or something in the show. <laughs> yeah. My dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. his hair melts so bad. So there's always like a dog hair on me that I need to remove. <laughs> or like something. I just find it's a lot easier. Yeah. And um, yeah. I don't know. Like I don't know how to do all the crazy stuff where you, you can like mix. I mean, I'm just learning how to do it now. So I have done a few shots mm -hmm. where I've done like two of me in the shot. Mm -hmm. It's taken me like a whole day <laughs> to work it out. It's kind of like trial and error. Like, what does this button do? But yeah, I, I really yeah, love it. Until you learn, it takes some time. I love it. It's I, easier, the I Photoshop love it, for though. cleaning. I find it a lot easier. Yeah. Like Lightroom's good if you're really quick mm -hmm. and you just want to like get it done quickly. But I really enjoy spending time yeah. on Photoshop, actually. It's kind of like painting, isn't it? I never used to get it. Um, uh, the year before last, I was at a workshop and um, Valentina was saying about how editing she finds like painting. And I was like, oh, I've never really mm -hmm. 
and since then I've I, I get it now I think it is kind of like you are sort of a painter finishing your image like it yeah indeed it's a big part of uh, of the process it's yeah the editing yeah. part a huge part so you put your style you put your mark and you clean up the image so the eye yeah. leads to the main object as you say as well yeah, yeah indeed because sometimes now um i will use like layers of um so i'll like dark do like a dark layer and a light layer and i'll rub it like i'll draw it on mm-hmm. i just feel like it makes the image pop a bit more yeah certainly yeah, yeah i like it sense. It makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so that's your photography process. Um, now, uh, you usually, of course, put your images on uh, Instagram, but I saw that you're also um, very big on Pinterest. So I wonder, what does Pinterest mean for you uh, and for your business? Oh, I love Pinterest. I don't know. Oh, I just, I'm so old school. Like I still love Pinterest. There's some people that are like, what, oh, Pinterest? But it's so great for inspiration. Like I always use Pinterest, yeah. I, I'll sit there at night watching TV and I'll just like go through Pinterest like for hours. Yeah. Like just love it. It's great for if you've got a blog, obviously, because you mm-hmm. um can draw traffic back and it's there for like forever. You can always like draw traffic back from it. Mm-hmm. So it's get it's great like in a business way, but I kind of love it more for inspiration sort of way for yourself uh-huh. yeah but let's say for the business way because i saw you have six hundred eighteen thousand followers on uh, on pinterest so i wonder um how do you put the images there do they automatically come from your blog or do you actually upload it on pinterest yourself or oh yeah so on my blog i've got like a pin it button so i'll just pin mm-hmm. the images like that i don't you write any of those no, I've never even, like, people were talking about Tailwind and all that. Like, I've never done anything special. I've just kind of just pinned images. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's your talent. It just picks up automatically everything because the images are just way too beautiful to be ignored. But so I think gonna be I had a Instagram nice. It was years ago, though, that I got all those followers. Like, I think now there's a lot more strategic sort of way to do it. Um. I don't know. I have kind of let my website go. I haven't posted anything on there for ages. I need to get back to it. <laughs> but Pinterest is <laughs> definitely the way to go if you want to get traffic to your blog. Pinterest is great for that. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. And uh, another question I had was, um, what was it? I had it in my head. Oh, yeah. You won uh, a category, I think even a couple of times and food uh, like pink lady food photography awards so i'm just curious um does that bring something extra to your business and Mm -hmm. how does it help your business let's say that's a tricky one i mean after i won i had a lot of people reach out and say oh congratulations you know we'd love to work together but i'm Um, trying to think if anyone if they actually like followed through i'm not sure i think i had people yeah people kind of said oh we'll send you your our product and they wanted it for free i don't know whether i actually yeah i don't know i can't think of much, many monetary jobs i got from it i think it was good to boost my confidence mm-hmm. and maybe that helped me be more assertive and get work in that sense possibly i mean it made people more aware of me i don't know I, I, I don't it's know. Promotion, it's difficult yeah. to know. Maybe but no food photography clients out of it. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe it put me on some brands' radars. Mm-hmm. And it right. could have. It's difficult to know, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's also hard to know whether it's from this or just from yeah. your, like, let's say, Instagram and social media. Makes sense, makes sense nice no but it's really cool like every time i scroll because i also apply let's say to that competition every time i scroll i'm like okay i'm not entering food blogger world i mean amy is gonna be there there's no way to win that one no, like it's not, always you kind of like no not this year just, not this year no 
What? I know. I How is that to... possible? I didn't really want to enter and then at the last minute I thought, well, maybe I will. No, I think it's good that someone else gets the chance. For... <laughs> and yeah, but actually, I mean... And, and honestly, have you seen the pictures? They're so good this year. Yeah, they're all, they're they, so every amazing. year they're really, really special. Well, it's a mixture. To, to be honest, for me, there is half of them extremely good and half of them are okay yeah i so have it's a big mixture in a way i haven't I had a chance know. to have a proper look but usually i'm usually like wow but there's some really strong images this year yeah. in the category that i would have entered into and For thinking the, about yeah. it maybe that is why i think if you'd spoke to someone that had won like the wine category or something like that it would have made a huge yeah. difference but i think because it was the blogging category maybe it's not taking as as seriously maybe that's why i didn't it didn't i don't know that that could be a reason your images are fantastic oh jesus but also but year, i think my... it was not only food blogger it was also food influencer maybe that's why as well it was more tricky they changed the category yeah so now also people who don't have food blog can also enter that category so now it became very broad and huge category this year i think my images are um a certain style as well and all, they're not very commercial so it, it is quite tricky to get jobs with certain brands i think as well yeah that's what i was also wondering like if the client reaches out to you um would you change your style then or would you still keep your rustic and be like no i'm not gonna do whatever pink backdrop kind of thing i mean yeah i i'd I'd be happy to do anything, but I think because mm -hmm. I only post one certain thing, mm -hmm. maybe that limits them to think that that's all I can do. Possibly, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Right, makes sense. I think then portfolio needs to communicate um, the different styles, yeah, regardless of the Instagram feed. Yeah, that's really important, I think. So you show different things, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, one more topic I wanted to ask you about because I'm so interested personally in it, which is I don't know how to pronounce that word correctly, but foraging? Oh, foraging. Foraging, yes, yes. because in your food and your photography, you use a lot of uh, edible flowers and herbs and you find them, right? Yourself or not? Yeah. Okay, so how do you know whether they're edible or not? <laughs> Oh, I've um. It's taken a few years, I think, to learn about um which ones are edible and how to identify them and stuff. But I don't know. I'm a bit nerdy. I love that sort of thing. I've That's got fine. a few um books, and mm -hmm. um. There's some websites. There's one called Eat Your Weeds, I think, and they send out like a monthly newsletter about what you can find each month to go and look for. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's yeah. Pretty good. And how do you know whether they'll like how they will taste, whether they'll fit your food or not? Um I've you kind of in the books that you um that I've got they kind of describe the flavour and what they pair well with. And edible flowers, my friend Jan who runs um she owns an organic edible flower farm. So she's been really helpful mm -hmm. over the years help um oh, helping nice, me yeah. like discover which ones are edible or not. And how we would taste, basically. Makes yeah. sense. What would be your tip for someone starting for a, for a foraging? For um, yeah, be a hundred percent sure of what you're picking. <laughs> that's that's a good one, I think. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe like something easy that's easily identifiable mm -hmm. because, like things like wild garlic. I mean, that's very easy to identify, but there is another oh. plant that looks similar. That is poisonous, oh. so you have to kind of. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. They, yeah. um, the leaves, when they first start coming out, they look very similar to Lily of the Valley, which is poisonous. So you have to be. I think if you're new to wild garlic, you maybe you need to wait until it has started flowering because the flowers are probably easier to identify for a first time sort of person picking them. That's a good tip. Yeah, makes sense. 
Yeah. I'm excited to go and try foraging still. <laughs> I still have to do it. I really want to use it also in the food because it looks so pretty. I think that it makes it special. Yeah. yeah. Oh, amazing. What else is there? This is going for easy things like clover leaves and um trying to think what's in season so soon will be elderflower season like even the smells going by the smells if you know what uh-huh. what it should smell like that's quite helpful mm-hmm. and, um in the summer the roses um i'm quite lucky because i live in a place where there's like the sea and the countryside so i this oh. i keep saying every year this year i want to try and learn more about the sea um things you can forage from the beach so Last year I found there was loads of sea fennel and um, things like that. Uh-huh. So this year I'm going to try and cook a bit more with things like that. I just like something I that it. was out from the from on the beach or how yeah. do you or so inside the sea like different seaweeds and stuff. I want to try. But are just them. washed out, and you can eat that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 But um, along the along the cliffs there's loads of um plants that you can eat uh-huh. as well so like fennel and other things so i'm quite interested right. in it but um the coast path leading to it where i live is full of roses in the summer like um wild roses and they have the strongest smell i'm sure my neighborhood must think i'm really strange like um oh, there's a little nice. park across the road and i'll like run across in my pajamas like I just need to go get some free corner leaf yeah. <laughs> in the middle of cooking, just run across the road. But um, oh, yeah, look, so I don't awesome. know. I think it's really special. Like when you've been out and you've gathered, I don't know, there's something about going to gather all the ingredients yourself and picking them from the wild and then coming oh, home and cooking with them. It feels, I don't know, you feel like, I don't know mm-hmm. if it's like the hippiness in me, but you do, you feel like more connected to like the place where you where you are yeah i like it i agree we used to do that in lithuania every year it's very very popular to go collect mushrooms yeah that i also kind of it's the same thing basically you also need to know which ones you collect of course but then you know there's so many and here in the netherlands nobody does that so sometimes i just go in the forest and find so many like special (laughs) mushrooms because nobody knows that you can collect them they're scared here but it's basically the same thing, but with the herbs, I I never tried that, so I really wanna, I really wanna try that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, go on. Um, there's loads of websites, and there's some books. There's some little books you can get that you kind of take with you. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an app I haven't tried, but my brother's got this app, and whenever yeah. we go on a dog walk, he's got his little app out, like, oh, this is this. But. Like this time you had nettles, like that's quite an easy one. Nettles, yeah, nettles. I know everyone can things like just simple things. Like there's nettles everywhere there, and they're a pain. So you might as well you might as well eat them and make the most of them. Oh, that's nice. Okay, awesome. So now, a couple last closing questions. Okay. Um, yeah, what is most fun for you about your work? Um. I, at the moment, I'm really enjoying, like, being creative and just doing, like, cooking as if it was, like, an art project. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know, I've, I have been struggling, actually, in the last few weeks to kind of get motivated and find my inspiration again, mm-hmm. which I usually do find is quite normal for me in the beginning, beginning of the year. So I'm hoping now we're into spring, my mojo will come back. But I don't know, I just, I think I've enjoyed the freedom because of lockdown, because work's been quite, I've enjoyed that freedom to just have fun and bake and just have fun Mm -hmm. with it for a change. I've been really enjoying it. Makes sense. Yeah. Um... Is there, um, what would be your advice for someone starting as a food photographer? You have to give like one important advice. Um, my tip would probably be on a technical sort of tip, like learn how to see light. Like 
don't worry so much at first about like what you're photographing even just place like an apple on a table you need to study how the light hits things and understand the shadows and the positioning of the light and things like that because mm -hmm. i mean you could photograph the ugliest dish probably in the nicest light and it will still look amazing so i think once you've mastered being able to see light and understand it then move on to composition and and then focus on that i think those two things are very important yeah i agree but you don't need to start like i didn't start with expensive equipment i started with a cheap Samsung camera then I got like a entry level Canon and I only upgraded to a full frame the year before last like I don't have all these different equipment like I don't have all these fancy boards and things like that I mean just make the most of what you have in your house like you can use a curtain you can use like to make shadows on the table I'll just like grab a bowl and just put it there like you don't you know uh, yeah you don't you don't need to go out and spend loads of money. Like my lens costs like sixty pounds. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't need fancy equipment no. to make uh, beautiful pictures. Here's an example. Yeah, perfect. Yes. Makes and sense. have have fun with it. Don't stress. Like it's not going to happen overnight. Small steps every day. Practice, and just try, try and enjoy it. Like. I, I have um, chats with some people and they're like, oh, it's not working. I feel like I want to give up. And I think when you get to that point where you're kind of, everybody grows, everybody learns at a different pace. And you, the comparison, like people compare how quick they're learning or how their images look to other people, like focus on, just try focus on yourself and how, I think that will really help. The comparison thing is so difficult and I've I do it all the time but I think it can be quite stifling when you're starting out yeah yeah same here I do it all the time still no I do it yeah. I do it all the time still but I think if I had realized if someone had told me before I started like you shouldn't do this I don't know might have helped you would still do it i think it's so natural to i don't know it's it's bad though it's really bad yeah okay i have a couple of questions from the audience for you oh okay 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 there was one uh, there at Piscara was asking how is your dimension doing oh not so good actually oh no he had his um we had an MRI this week, so we're waiting for the okay. radiographer to get back, but they might have to amputate his leg. Oh, God, what's yeah. wrong? Um, he's got, like, a tumour that's pushing on the nerves in his leg. Oh, poor, little, poor little monkey. So, I don't know. I mean, I've been reading up, and I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah. But it's just a bit scary. scary. Yeah, I bet. A little tripod. <laughs> oh, you're a little baby. Oh, that's really, that's really yeah, sad. Yeah, I think that's why I'm so knackered because every night, it's like having a newborn because he's such, um, he seems to be in a lot of pain at night. Yeah. So I feel like I haven't slept in like four months. But hopefully, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm happy that we're getting to a place where we're discovering the problem. So fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. Positive thoughts. <laughs> hopefully we can, yeah, solve it, I hope. Fingers crossed. Yeah. What kind of lens we already answered? Your 50 millimeters, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry, still trying to read which ones are good. <laughs> Somebody asked, how do you find your voice in uh, food storytelling and how do you um, stay with the same type of style throughout, the, throughout your time? I think it's important to use your own voice so then it's quite easy to be sort of authentic all the time. So mm -hmm. I've, I've, um, I don't know, I think I do put myself into my style like a hundred percent. 
So everything about it is very me, like the mess, the things I wear, the light. So it's quite, I think if you try to be as authentic as you can be to you, it's very easy to keep your style um, very similar all the time. <laughs> if, that makes, if that makes sense? That makes sense, yes. Thank you. Okay, then I have the last, last question for you is where can the listeners find you? Um, so I spend most of my time on Instagram, so it's probably best to come and find me there, which is at, at Twig Studios. And my website is twigstudios.com. Perfect. Well, thank you, Amy, for this wonderful conversation. It was thank so, you so much, much fun having you here. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed it. <laughs>